Hey, my legion, how y'all doing today? I'm here today to do a movie review triple thread, but I only put one movie in the title, the one that was seemed the most interesting. Not the best one, though. A movie called Chatterbox from 1977. Oh, man, I'm getting a headache. Uh, what this is about, it's a very short film. It's only like an hour and 13 minutes, thankfully. And I saw it on Film Rise TV, and they had some called Mutant Sorority Massacre at the bottom where it had like all the trauma movies and, uh, and a lot of the B movies and stuff like that. And I was watching those, and I got really frustrated on the Roku because those are free channels, and but they'd have the movie, and they'd have commercial breaks in them. And what was happening back when I was, I was trying to watch Chatterbox before, it'd have a commercial break, and then they'd have a commercial, and the commercial would freeze, and then it would reset to Roku and go back to thing. I couldn't, and every time I tried to press the, the movie, it'd have a commercial too, and then the commercial would freeze and reset. And this went on for a while. I was pissed. It wasn't anything to do with the Roku. It was something with the channels and stuff. And what happened was I ended up having just to watch them on the computer. But FilmRise doesn't up up up. FilmRise doesn't upgrade their uh, stuff. But I don't think they could show that it had nudity in it too. It's R-rated, and even though it's not as tasteless as you think, there's lots of topless, you know, lots of uh, topless things in this one girl. But it's about this girl that discovers she has a talking vagina. I mean, all of a sudden, well, I mean, all of a sudden it started, you hear this like, bling, and then all of a sudden it started talking. All of a sudden. And all it is is just a voice off camera. And, uh, you know, it's from the 70s when she called this one guy, when her vagina called this one guy turkey. And then they had like a disco scene, a scene, and, uh, and the girl, her name was Penelope, the girl with the talking thing. Um, and she worked at this beauty shop and Rip Taylor was the boss. Rip Taylor was in this professor, Corey, Corey something was in it. And some other guy, I remember, I can't remember his name though. I recognize was in that. And, uh, you know, and, and you can tell it's low budget because there was a scene where her was talking to Rip Taylor and the boom mic kept falling down like this. I mean, really evident too, like about five or six times in the scene, really low budget. And what happens is she goes to her psychiatrist, and I, I can't remember the guy's name. And then she becomes famous. She goes on all these shows, and her vagina starts singing. Like it was singing the national anthem at baseball. State. Well, the first thing it was singing, Way Down Upon the Swanee River, which is really incre <laughs> incredibly stupid. And there was a band playing around and stuff. And then she did, she was on this one variety show, and she did a song called uh, Let Out Your Wang Dang. <laughs> Let out your wang dang doodle. And they had like a song and dance that was so terrible. And it was like, every time, I mean, you didn't see the, they didn't have nudity of the lower extremities, except they might see a butt shot if so often. They'd have like a, something like a little outfit covering or a merkin covering her private part. I mean, even though she was topless a lot. Well, some in the movie. Because um, it is an R.A. movie. And there was cursing in it. Um... And then there was another thing saying, uh, I like waking up with my cockadoodle do. And that was a horrible day. It was so bad. And it, it had the look of a TV movie, but it must have gotten released to the theaters. It was in that movie review booklet. They gave it two stars, believe it or not. It was on Cinema Snob. That's how I found out about it. And then I was just going through and I thought, oh, Chatterbox is there. I wish I could have watched it with my dad. Even though dad would have probably would have said, he wanted to either done this. He said, this is lame. Or he, he put his hand over his head and go, this is so goddamn stupid, goddamn stupid, like that, you know. But, I mean, it, I can't say it was so bad it's good, but it was so bad it was stupid, but it kind of enjoyable in its own way. I'll probably never, I'll never see it again. But, I mean, for an hour and 13 minutes, it went by kind of quick. And it had the look of a TV movie, even though it's like R-rated. And it's not X-rated. It's, it's cleaner than you think it would be, but it's still R-rated dirty, but not as dirty as you'd think, considering the premise. Now, the other two movies I saw is I finally saw a Perfect Storm. I'm back, back in 2000. So on Netflix, so they just added it on Netflix, and they a bunch of fishermen, and then it, it's based on a true story of them encountering this huge storm where they wanted to get more fish. Uh, I wish it would have been better. I just didn't get into it that much. I didn't think it was that involving until like the last 40-some minutes. 
Uh, the best scenes are any scene with uh, Michael Ironside. Because Michael Ironside is, is good in everything. Uh, the scene with the shark. And the scene with the two guys fighting. And then as, some of the effects were cool. I mean, because I just couldn't buy, like, um, George Clooney or Mark Wahlberg in, as fishermen in there. You know, I just it, it wasn't involving enough. It was okay. Um... But, I mean, that's probably why I didn't bother to see it. Because I know my dad and I, we had a chance to see it on HBO or something like that. And we were like, yeah, I don't really want to see this. I don't really care to see it. My dad, I think my dad saw it and he said it was okay. Um, but, I mean, I pretty much knew that the effects, you can tell from the picture, the effects are just going to be a bunch of ways. It's going to be real black and gray and stuff like that. And that's what, what it was. you know. But I did get involved in it somewhat towards the last 40 minutes or so. But, I mean... At the end of the movie, it's supposed to be really sad. I'm not, I'm not giving away any spoilers. It's supposed to be real sad. You're supposed to break down crying. I didn't cry once. Uh, and I usually cry in the sad parts, but I mean, that's one that didn't get me. It didn't get me because I didn't think it was that involving. I mean, it's okay. I think it's better. I think Chatterbox was more entertaining than this. You know, this is a big budget movie. I, th I get this to probably, uh, oh, because it had a shark scene, I got a little more involved in a very much 6 out of 10 for that. Now, the very last movie is probably the best of the three, and Heather told me about it, is Bernie with Jack Black, because I remember on the critic shows, them talking about um, a Jack Black movie. These, these independent shows, I know there's buzz amongst the critics, and then they kind of get forgotten, and then you kind of forget what the movie's called. And thankfully, Heather told me about Bernie, and she actually told me about it a few days ago. And then she, I talked to her again. She said, did you see Bernie yet? And I said, well, no. And she said, you should see that. It's really good. Because I did want to see it. I just forgot about it again. And uh, I shut off. And she said it was on Netflix, but she doesn't know if it's still on. Because Netflix has been taking off movies. Just, and they're focusing more on their own TV shows. And some are good and some are bad, you know. Um, well, other than movies. They, I wish they'd put more movies on there. So instead of forgetting about putting it on their own TV shows. And some are very good. Um, shit, what was I going to say? I lost my track of thought, train of thought. Oh, Bernie's a, a true, based on true story about this guy that uh, works at a mortuary. And he ends up, like, he's very, incredibly generous and very mild-mannered. And um, he sings a lot, so I, I assume that's why Jack Black really got the part, because he sings a lot and it's like a dark comedy. And he ends up befriending uh, Shirley MacLaine, which is one of the who's one of the meanest women in the town. And there's a bunch of town folks speaking about stuff, including the guy Sonny Davis, who was the crazy old guy in the Evil Bong movies. He's in this. Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey's in this as a uh, district attorney. I think he's really good. Shirley MacLaine's really good, and then like I said, Jack Black is very good. And a lot of critics were saying how good he was in the movie and stuff like that. And they got a lot of buzz, but like I said, it just got forgotten. And I think the, uh, Jay Leno mentioned saying how good it was. I think Jay Leno was still hosted the Tonight Show. I think. I don't remember. Maybe it was Con I don't remember. Um, but no, it was really good. I don't want to give away any spoilers. But I mean, at the end, basically, he befriends. He he ends up getting into own relationship with the guy. And she ends up being real controlling. I don't want to give away any more except saying that at the end of the movie, they show like the actual photos of the actual people. Because it's based on a true story. And then they have. A really neat shot. They showed like the guy talking, the real guy, Bernie, talking to Jack Black, which is really weird because Jack Black plays the character. Then at the end, they show the real life character talking to the actor who was going to play him. Cause I don't think they've done that before. In the movie. I thought that was really clever. And then uh, make sure to watch all the credits because they have more stuff from the town folk talking. And then some guy doing a song based on Bernie, which is pretty cool. And I give, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I give Bernie like a 9.5 out of 10. That's the best of the three movies. So There you have for Chatterbox. <laughs> a scene on Cinema Snob. Uh, Perfect Storm. And Bernie. Uh, so until next time, bye. Please take care of my legion. I was going to upload this video Saturday, but I mean... Uh, a bunch of stuff happened, and then, you know, I put that Elvis hot dog thing on. So I'll upload this sometime. Probably be my first video I upload on Sunday. It's probably around noon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So until next time, take care, everyone. And thank you again, Heather, for letting me know about Bernie. It was awesome.